Okay, yeah, sure. So CRISPR takes a similar approach to the TF-IDF baseline. Uh, we used a SBIRT type model, which stands for sentence BERT, to generate embeddings for every single question in the Kanta train set. Then when given a question, we generate an embedding for the question and use cosine similarity to find the top 10 most similar questions in the train set. Uh, to determine which of the 10 answers to return, we compute some features like um, the run length, the number of negatives in the question, uh, et cetera, and pass it to a logistic regression model. Then we take the top scoring answer as our final answer and buzz if the score is above a threshold. Sure. Um, uh, we used uh, GPT-3, which is a transformer-based autoregressive language model. And it's pre-trained on massive amount of text from data from the web. Uh, we actually are using a, like a somewhat modified version of uh, GPT-3, what we call uh, GPT-3 with prompt retrieval. Essentially, the goal was to, uh, instead of using some random question answer pair, we retrieve like the most similar uh, uh, K, most similar question answer pair from our training set. And we use like TF, IDF to encode all the questions, retrieve the most similar questions um, for each given like test question based on the cosine similarity. And uh, we use that uh, uh, for this particular, uh, uh, this particular challenge. And uh, the, our uh, GPT-3 with prompt retrieval outperformed our uh, GPT-3 uh, base model in like four out of eight data sets, but it did like, uh, does fall short in some categories, um, specifically like when it, when it comes to common sense reasoning or multi-hop reasoning.
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just you. I'm watching the stream and I hear the explanation of the GPT-3 system just fine. I just don't hear you. Could it be because you had the hide self play? Were you wearing headphones when you tested it, Jordan? Okay. Um, okay, so we're adding a twist to um, this quiz bowl game um, with the introduction of something called wild cards. Um, and so basically we've got six categories um, of kind of perturbations to questions um, that we've introduced. So things like changing up the question um, in like, we'll add a question in German. So there'll be, the questions are translated to German and, you know, passed to the models. Uh, we've scrambled some of the sentences in a question. Um, we've masked out certain words uh, that, that make it difficult for, for the models to predict the right answer. Um, and so there are six of these categories. Um, and so, uh, any team can choose to use a wild card. Um, they're usable after uh, every five questions or 10 questions. Um, and so um, you can use two wild cards per side. So the humans can use two wild cards and the um, computer teams can use two wild cards. Um, and so you can just call out wild card. Uh, we'll stop the system. We have different questions, uh, three per um three per uh, category. And if there's a tie, one of these like wild cards will help break the tie. Um, and so, um, yeah, so we've, we've se selected separate questions for those. Um, and um, yeah, so those are, those are usable. So let us know uh, if you want to use a wild card um, after um, like a batch of five questions is passed and we'll, we'll stop the game and, and use them. Okay, let's try this. Uh, okay, on the screen, can you hear me? There's lag on the live stream, so we'll have to wait a second. Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. Just on stream. <laughs> Thank you for uh, the debugging help. Okay. Now, if only there were a way to mute myself. So I think what I'll do is when I'm reading a question, I will take the headphones off. Okay, let's go through the 
wild cards that are available. Some of these are more likely to be helpful for the computers. Some are more likely to be helpful for the humans. Uh, that's what we thought going in. The, the actual result may be surprising. Uh, so part of the strategy will be to select uh, strategically which of these you want to use. Each of them have three questions. And the scramble and sensor uh, variations have replacements of existing questions. The other ones add three new questions. OK. Uh, and you will need to infer what the wild cards actually mean from the somewhat cryptic labels. So that'll be fun. All right, any questions before we get started? Not really. <laughs> OK, all right. Uh, so uh, Neha, uh, please share your screen. Everyone hear me and see my screen. Looks good to me. Yes. Wonderful. And all three of the human players are logged into the Buzz in Live room um, and everyone's good to go. Yes. All right, cool. So um, I'm going to buzz in for everybody that everyone's ready. Um, I'm ready too. <laughs> Okay, let me set up Neha's Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Okay, all right. Okay, toss up number one. In a contrasting collection to this one, the author notes he especially hates four things tobacco smoke, garlic, bed bugs, and Christ. 20 love poems and a song of despair. That is incorrect. Uh, and uh, that was uh, Quizbert uh, who buzzed in there. Okay, so uh, I will continue reading the rest of the question for the humans. A poem in this collection warns the reader of the time when the cold leaf annoyance captures your foot in its flight. In his last poem, the author relates the tale of Midas and claims that mine is a secret more pleasant but even more difficult keeping. This collection's title location is said to contain a soul in each object within its sanctified walls in its first poem, which also commands it to tell me ye stones and give me a glorious palace's answer. This collection contained four poems, which were not published until 1914 due to censorship. And the collection at large was inspired by the author's companion, uh, Christiana Volkens. Uh, published with Venetian epigrams was for 10 points. What collection of 24 poems reflecting like Italy by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe? Oh, um. So buzz in if you know it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out since we don't oh, have. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I have no uh, clue, sorry. Three, quest, uh, three seconds at the end of the question. All right. I'll just take a guess. There's no penalty for guessing at the end. Yeah. Um, Roman elegies. <clears throat> uh, that is correct. Good job. Wait. All right. So uh, the computer lost five points. We're not able to show negative numbers, however. Uh, so hopefully that will uh, get corrected very soon. Uh, and we can make, yeah. So what I'll do is I, I will put five points on here, but let's just remember that it's negative. Okay. The computer clearly okay. lacks, lacks my skill at putting together words roughly synonymous with Italy and poem. Okay, toss up number two. 
After one ruler of the state died, his corpse was left to rot for 67 days as his sons fought a civil war to gain rulership. This state was the first destination of later Duke Win of Jin when he was fleeing his brother who sought to kill him. One ruler of the state had an incestuous relationship with his sister, Win Jia. A ruler of the state was the first of the five hegemons in the spring and autumn period. Famed military strategist Tian Ziya was the first marquee of the state, which lasted from the establishment of the Zhou dynasty until the beginning of the Qin dynasty. For 10 points, name the state the last to be conquered in the Qin unification of Qi. And that is correct. All right, so now the score is actually correct, and that is positive likewise. Okay, toss-up number three. Uh, this province has, thanks to its RCZ starting near Cold Lake, essentially zero rat infestations. This province... Um, it's Alberta. That is correct. Mm. And got in just before uh, GPT uh, retrieval. Okay. All right, so uh, humans taking the lead. Uh, toss up four. In this town, the Gypsy Moth Four and Cuddy Sark are kept in dry dock at museum ships. Frank Dyson, a director residing in this geographic location, introduced the six pips. An important international zero reference was named for this location. Um, Greenwich. Uh, that is correct. Yeah. Uh, and again, got in. Uh, well, not just before the computer, but uh, a little bit before, but it was also getting there. Okay, toss up five. In a celebration of his 1899 state Senate victory, a party on his front porch caused it to collapse. Cheryl Smart Hall's biography contends such an event would normally be covered in the Marion Daily Star, but was not because he owned the paper. That rebuilt porch was later the focus of his run for the presidency, Unique in that his opponent was also a newspaper owner, albeit of the much larger date is, um, news, James Cox. Is it me or the computer? Uh, Yogesh. I mean, you, you can, right? We're allowed to, to, to answer for each other, right? Or? I think so. Okay, you, you can go ahead. Which way? Um, I think it's Harding. Yeah. Yeah, Warren G. Harding. Yeah, he ran against James Cox. Yeah, yeah it just yeah. wasn't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, humans take a pretty big lead. Toss up. Lundrigan et al. found that this functional group could be in selectively reduced with the use of uh, triads plus spinium cations, the differing reactions of oxygenation and dehydroxygenation dehydrogenation, sorry, respectively, means that tempo can be used to distinguish between this functional Indeed. group and its tata number. In the absence of water, this addition of Grignard reagents to nitriles yields the, this functional group. Sodium cyanohydride uh, is often employed to reduce this functional group to an amine in reductive amination. This functional group can be prepared via a Hemiaminal intermediate by reacting a carbonyl group with the primary amine under acidic conditions, and it can be uh, hydrolyzed back to the carbonyl. This functional group is sometimes also called a. Okay, so this is, I, I have this here. Uh, if the uh, hetero you want to buzz? is not attached to. I, mean, I, I, I can wait till the end, but it's just a functional oh. group analogous yeah, to a carbonyl, but with a C in double bond. This is okay. an inine. Uh, say that again. Inine, I M I N. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Pass up. All right, Jordan, do you want to change the, the score? So uh, while you were reading, the computer actually buzzed. Oh. Um, and got it wrong. So there we go. Back to zero. Okay, toss up. Parvatabai escaped this battle on a mare before meeting with uh, Malhar Rao Holkar, who took her to Balabar. The losing side's plan was to draw their opponents into their French main artillery, but this failed when Abdali dispatched light cavalry to cut off supplies. In contrast, the victors could more flexibly. Good battle of Honey uh, It buzzed and it got Okay, it. there we go. Cool. 
All right, so we're back on the board. Okay. Awesome. A test for meth and other alkaloid drugs that uses formaldehyde and this compound is a marquee reagent. In the 19th century, German chemist Justus von Liebig uh, believed that a country's prosperity could be based on the amount of this compound used. Removing organic residues can be done using hydrogen peroxide and this compound, which make up a solution called piranha etch. A vanadium oxide. Sulfuric acid. That is correct. Nice. Awesome. The protagonist of this work believes that a cup of absinthe could take the place of all things he had enjoyed and forgotten, such as the evening papers and chestnut trees in bloom. This book begins and ends with the protagonist on the pine needle floor of the forest. After two characters in the novel make love, a woman nicknamed Rabbit is asked, did the... For whom the bell tolls. That is correct. Okay, question 10, after which uh, the team that is trailing can employ a wild card. Toss it. The fourth symphony of one composer from this country begins with the string section playing numerous F major pizzicato chords, while a piano joins with a melody, followed by a bassoon shortly after. A cello concerto by another composer from this country begins with exactly 18 open string feet. Poland. And that is correct. All right. So the computer is just marginally behind. So would the computer teams like to use a wild card? And as a reminder, uh, the wild cards we have on offer are uh, Scramble. Uh, uh, so Nia, do you have that in front of you? Um, yes, I do. Do um, I can read them out? Uh, okay. Well, so we have um, scramble, uh, old um, machine learning, German sensor, um, or boring. And sensor with a C. Yes. So something has been removed. Yes. Yeah. Question: We can only use uh, the the wild cards twice, right? Exactly. Cards. So okay. if you want to wait. Uh, you can wait and do it later. I would like to wait. Okay. Yeah, we can wait. Okay, very well. Pressing on with toss up 11. When his successor took the throne, J.T. Arusev reported that a song claimed that death defilement antidotes were eaten. Important because his aunt confirmed his half-brother as his successor. Normally impossible because Dengane killed him. He is usually credited with the Mephikane disruption that occurred while consolidating his power. His nephew, Kachweo, used his innovative bullhorn formation. Um, Shaka Zulu? Shaka, Shaka Zulu, yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, toss up 12. He currently serves as chair of Cerberus's Global Investments Division, and his son represented Arizona's third district from 2011 to 2013. Dan Coates was elected to fill a Senate seat vacated by this man, who had previously defeated Birch Bayh in 1980. In 1992, he told yeah, William Figueroa. Yeah. yeah. That is correct. Yeah. A little late. <laughs> yeah, should have gone a second earlier. Hey, toss up 13. The HMS Chatham joined a ship with this name that was used on an early 1790s expedition led by George Vancouver. Before the Terra Nova expedition, Robert Falcon Scott laid an expedition named for this ship that visited Antarctica. Henry Green and Robert Jouette participated in a 1611 mutiny on a ship with this name. Uh, now, Discovery. Okay, that is correct. Mm. Okay, toss of 14, after I adjust the score. 
A ratio involving the sums of masses of members of this class and the square of the sum of the square roots is approximately two thirds as given by Coiti's formula. A 2021 experiment involving one particle from this class found that its G factor differed from the standard model prediction by 4.2. So what, what's the class including protons? Is that going to be um, a, 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 a boson? Okay. It's not Hayden. Um, no. Okay, fine. Okay, I, I, I heard boson as an answer. That is incorrect. Okay. And so uh, I'll very quickly uh, go to the end of the question. Uh, for 10 points, name this class of elementary particles which are contrasted with quarks and contains the tau, the muon, oh, okay. and the electron. Okay. And let's see if the computer can figure it out at the end. Lepton. And it does. Sorry, I thought this was referring to the, the study that showed that protons are a different size than we think they are. Okay. Toss up 15, uh, after which the trailing team can employ a wild car. Let's see which team that'll be. How's a 15? During this period, Nikolai Rezanov failed to establish a trading port in 1805. During this period, a translation of Ante de Kründige Tafelin was published by Sugita in 1774. Chief, Man uh, sorry, Chief Minister E.E. E. was assassinated in front of the Sakurada gate of its namesake castle in 1860. Edo period. And that is correct. All right, the humans are trailing. Uh, you have the option of using uh, scramble, old machine learning, German, sensor, or boring, if you would so like. Um, I, would, I would say that machine learning is probably a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have a machine learning expert uh, on your team. Well, the, mach the machines are going to be way better than me. You know, you know that. But the set, the sensor could work, no? Since yeah, the good. the models, they they're like well, it depends what is censored. They're probably relying on keywords to. Uh, can, can we also choose the model? Like, uh, can we? No, no. Uh, the, the, the computers <laughs> get to choose. Otherwise, uh, the the, the German are. the German would be very interesting if it's not GPT three. That one knows German, but the Quizbird doesn't know German. Oh, interesting. Mm. Hmm. Other people who don't know German include me. <laughs> I, can, I can translate. <laughs> I've studied, okay, yeah, seriously. I, I've I've studied a little Danish, um, so like, <laughs> there's gonna be some cognate, but uh, I feel that I might, the sensor might be jo Jordan. Do, do you think the sensor is more pro-human or pro-machine? <laughs> I thought that it would be pro-human. Yeah. Um, but who knows what it would actually be. Interesting. And the scramble, it depends. Is the word scrambled or are like are the words replaced by other words? Because that could also be interesting. That could throw the computer really off. But if the <laughs> order is scrambled, that just throws us humans off. <laughs> but we don't we don't know. I don't think we're gonna yeah. get that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Any of you wanna wanna choose a wild card? Um we probably should choose one at least. Yeah. Okay. And, well, then, and remember, you might not always be behind. So right. this may be your only chance. So in that case, censored maybe sounds like yeah, a let's try. better option. Censored sure. or German, um, whatever, whichever the two you think. Censor is fun. Okay. All right. Let's try that. Okay. And uh, computer team, which, which system would you like to put up to the test? How does your GPT-3 model do on censored stuff? We'll take the challenge. Yeah. Okay, okay sure. Okay, give me one second. Let me. Okay, so the humans still have one wild card available. We're going with GPT-3 sensor, and um, we were at 670 points human. Our computer was at 70, and humans were at 65, right? That's right. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Let me make sure the buzzers are clear. Okay. And ready to. All right. Okay, toss up 16. One of the world's largest hot pools is. Hmm. This is not the same question that we're seeing. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you need to skip 16 on the command meetup. Um, oh, that's right. Okay. This um, looks like the first question we yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, sorry about that. And then skip 16. Right. Um, all right, let's try this again. Right, and I will say that I set up the wild cards before knowing what systems would come through. Uh, so yes, Yannick is correct. It may be that some of these models, I thought I was disadvantaging them, but I might have been advantaging them. I'm ready too. And, and Mia, in the future, if you set player equals zero, we'll skip this. Oh, okay, I will do that. Okay, toss up 16. And for the things that are censored, I will just go, hmm. One of the world's largest pools is, hmm, frying pan lake. In 2017. New Zealand. Um, I'm not buzzing. I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Granted a 180 mile long river. Oh, that's going to be right. Okay. 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 So, so, yeah. Straight. Yeah. It's so, New Zealand. Okay. New Zealand. Yes, that is correct. Wonderful. Okay. Toss up 17. In a play, a servant in hmm knows his master is in love because he breathes his arms, relishes a love song, and sighs like a school. A different oh, servant wow. in hmm remarks, fire sex closest, kept burns most of all. Shortly before pretending to be her master when accepting a love letter from Speed. The title characters of a play partly named for hmm are Proteus and Valentine. A prince named It's Verona. Uh, it's right? Verona, yeah. Ver Verona. Yep, that's right. You even figured out that it was asking for the city. Toss of 18. After I increment the score. The second movement of an orchestral work by hmm contains a horn solo in the notes of descending G, E flat, B flat, ascending E flat, G, F, followed by another motif in the same rhythmic structure with the notes E flat, B flat, G flat, E flat, E, but is played with a stopped horn technique. That work concludes. Gustav Mahler. That is incorrect. Okay. Okay. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Mahler is the mask because that's a really weird, uh, the progression there is not terribly harmonic that they're giving. So The Queen of Shimica sings the hymn to the sun in the second act of, oh, well, I'll just go to the end. For 10 points, name, hmm, of Capriccio Espanol oh, and Shimica. Yeah. So Brimsky Korsakov. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Rimsky Korsakov. Yeah. Is that right, Jordan? Yes, that, that is correct. Sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, and that is the end of this wild card segment. All right, so we're at 95 to 65. Uh, Jordan, if you want to change the human player on your screen. Um, and I will... oh, yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are um, now on toss up 19. 19. Humans were at uh, 95. 95. Jordan, you're, you flipped it backwards. Nope. <laughs> and Thank you. Keeping me honest. Um, all right, I think we're ready to go. Okay, toss up number 19. The only signed version of this text is named for Alexander Bliss, 
Although its earliest known version is named for Don Nicolet, who served as its creator secretary. This text was written to follow a two hour oration by Edward. Yeah, yeah. It's a Gettysburg Getty 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 address. Getty. Yes. No, that is correct. Yeah. Springfield, Illinois knowledge. Toss up. Number 20, after which the Sprayling team will have a chance for a wild card. David Soule portrayed this man in a BBC opera where he attempts to use the Gettysburg Address to escape torture with barbed wire if he doesn't read the effing cards. The former lawyer resigned from a city council. It's, after uh, he paid it, I buzzed, I buzzed. Oh, I buzzed. sorry. It's Jerry Springer. That is correct. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, and now we have computers. Would you like to use a wild card? Yes. Um, what do you think about German? I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that's what we want, but I'm kind of curious about the machine learning wild card. What is that supposed to be exactly? Are you able to explain? No. Nope. You, you can infer what you would like. The literal wild card. <laughs> hmm. What are you doing, Doctor? Options are old questions, uh, uh, scramble, machine learning, German, and boring. Um, maybe the obvious choice here would be machine learning. Yeah, let's try that. My okay. time has come. Yeah. <laughs> and which system would you guys like to would you guys like to use? Mm, honestly, I feel like the GPT three one is probably better. All right, take the challenge. Let's All right. Do it. <laughs> So we are doing machine learning. Humans are at 115. Um, computers are at 65. So what I will do is, uh, yes, uh, these are three questions all about machine learning. So while Nita is setting up the uh, system each time, I'll explain what the wild card actually is after someone has selected it. But this doesn't require too much uh, explanation. OK. Uh, toss up. In September 2021, uh, Tony Chan announced that this person would lead the Artificial Intelligence Initiative at a university located in Thuwal. At a 2016 tutorial, he asked if the speaker could contrast generative adversarial networks. Jürgen Schmidhuber. That is correct. We appropriately cited him. Toss up. It was collected. Oh, sorry. Toss up. It was collected via paper HSF requiring participants to uh, uh, copy the preamble of the US Constitution and other fields to capture collocation effects. Those forms were completed by census takers and was first distributed on a 1990 CD ROM and required creating new algorithms to segment and compress the images. A subsequent version called Special Database 19 was transformed by adding the Gaussian blur, extracting the region of interest, centering it, and resampling it to 28 by 28 pixels and... MNIST. That is correct. All right. Final machine learning question. And so uh, for those of you in the class, hopefully you knew the answers to all of these questions. Awesome. Selmer brings your articulated strategies to judge if this were passed, including asking participants to write a short story. Let us give Davis and Morgenstern proposed an alternative, resolving referential ambiguities called the Winograd Schema Challenge. Mark Halpern's The Trouble. Uh. I have to try it. Uh, the Turing test. That is correct. Okay. 
I was not brave enough. (laughs) (laughs) I said it, but I didn't. (laughs) Hey, you guys did okay there. Jordan, are we on question 21? That is correct. Okay. All right. Hasa. This actor portrayed King Mattress, who dreamed of getting abducted by aliens in a parody of Mist called Fist. This Missourian shaved his head to appear opposite Nathan Lane in a 2009 revival of Waiting for Godot. One of his characters, a stand in for Polydemus, is a one eyed KKK member who masks. It's John Goodman. That is correct. Nice. Although in that production, they, they said got it, which annoyed me. Okay, Taza. A star appears over this figure's head as he sits next to a column wrapped in a red curtain in a painting by Juan de Pea, Diego Velazquez's former servant. A lone candle burns on an altar. Juan de Pea. That's incorrect. Uh, of a painting depicting this figure who reaches for a palm branch as his assailant prepares to stab him with his sword. The two leftmost figures in a painting titled for this figure are taken from a Hans Holbein print of gamblers who fail to notice death and the devil in their presence. An oil skin covers a window uh, in that painting housed in the Contarelli chapter along with paintings depicting the inspiration and martyrdom of this figure. Ambiguity exists over whether a pointing figure in a painting titled for this man is referencing himself or a young man counting coins. In that painting, Christ gestures towards the left as a ray of light from the upper right corner illuminates this figure for 10 points named as Apostle who is summoned by Jesus in a painting by Caravaggio. Um, so it's going to be Ma- Saint- Matthew. Saint Matthew. Ma- Matthew, yeah, it's Matthew. That is correct. Juan de Perea did paint himself, though, so the computer's guess wasn't completely out of bounds. That is correct, yeah. Awesome. Christ appears in a painting titled for this figure. I hear you. Yeah. Yep. We're sometimes getting an echo. Yeah. It might be that yeah. your uh, your threshold is just set really low on one device. The denationalization of money. I feel like I should know this here, but I don't. Hmm. Well, we know an era at least. Yeah, it's true. Well, uh, I mean, we know it has to be after. It could be much older. Um, hmm. That's true. Like it could like precede the IMF and everything. Um, it could be somebody like Ricardo, but. Hmm. Okay. Frederick Hayek. Okay. Okay. Frankfurt School makes sense. <laughs> oh, I don't hear you on stream anymore.
Sure. It, I mean, for me, because I'm I'm completely outmatched by the people here. <laughs> this is how do you people know so much stuff? <laughs> this is insane. Like, huh? <laughs> like, how I mean, do you pre- how do you prepare for this? Do you prepare or do you just like? I do. Is it just? Is it just a okay? No, I, I, I think that there's a certain point at which um, merely being curious and engaged, there's, there's a threshold, you know, mm-hmm. just limited by people's time and, and, and attention and um, whatever. The, thre- the threshold is called turning 30. <laughs> I disagree. I strongly disagree. <laughs> speaking, speaking of somebody who's much better at this than I was when I was 30. Right, um, but but you, it, it, the the mind starts needing supplementing at that point. <laughs> well, what do you do? You read Wikipedia or like? I, I, I mean, do. I, you go ahead. I mean, well, like I write a daily blog where I write three mini essays about things that I discovered, usually sourced from Wikipedia, including some stuff that's come up now. I actually, I think I did write about the the discovery. I couldn't remember the actual name of it, but um, some of the other ones too have come up. Crazy. Well, I'm 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 deeply impressed. I have to say. Okay, uh, I, can people hear me even now? All right, fantastic. I don't, I don't know if YouTube can, but we can. <laughs> well, I, 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 I think joining here allows YouTube to hear. Okay, okay but YouTube, uh, please do uh, uh, correct if uh, that is incorrect. Okay, so uh, we just did Frederick Hayek. Uh, it looks like the scores. Yeah, I hear are... you on YouTube, by the way. Okay, great. Uh, so there's a discrepancy in score here. So I say the computer has 75 and that says 70. Ah, yes, I missed, I, I missed that, the painting question. All right, so moving on, toss up. The track Bloom Dido features a collaborative album this man did with Charlie Parker titled Bird and This Artist, which was released by Verve Records. To better control his creative output, he founded DG Records in 1951, which published Burke's works titled after his middle name. He borrowed the chord structure from Paul Whiteman's Whispering for a 1945 work, Groove and High, and around the same time... Izzy Gillespie. That is correct. (laughs) DG, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay, toss of 25, after which we'll have another exciting wildcard opportunity. This novel's main character uses the theory of relative maturity to submerge his personal dilemma of submitting to his place and destiny and thinks of a gateway reading Dormir or to sleep. In the final moments of this novel, the protagonist taps the word I for the first time, ending with a grammatical fiction. Darkness at noon. That is correct. Ah, I, yeah, I should have. I've never read that. I should remember it. Okay, computers, you have one more wild card at your disposal. Would you like to use it now? And if so, what should it be? Uh, yeah, we would like to use wild card. We're thinking German. Okay. What was that? German. German, okay. And which system would you like to use? GPT-3. GPT-3. Should I, tr- should I attempt to like... I'm, I really suck at trivia, right? So should I attempt to like live translate or should I wait wait, wait can, until, yeah. until the great. end? Okay. Because yeah. if, it, if, it if, if it gets to the end, unless we've been able to pick up like cognates and everything, then... Oh yeah, proper uh, nouns. Like, pre- presumably proper nouns won't be translated, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, okay so I, I will mention that these are not just uh, questions translated into German. They also represent German speaking culture. Uh, so it is it is both a linguistic and cultural shift. Okay, and Jordan, just to confirm the score is correct, 165 to 90? I believe so, yes. All right, cool. Okay, yes. so apologies for my poor accent. Toss up number one. Sein Kommentar über die wahre und falsche Religion His commentary about true and false religion is, is dedicated to French King Franz the first. The reformators wanted to get him to convert. Philip I from Hessen. 
äh, beizulegen. Er sprach seine letzten Wörter, die können den Lieb töten, aber nicht die Seele, kurz bevor sein Lieb in der Schlag gerettet würde. Für zehn Punkte, wer kam 1519 als Leutpriester am Großmünster? Aldrich Swing. And that is correct. Oh, Sw Swingly. Swingly. Oh. I will count that. I will be generous and count that as correct. GPT-3 sometimes has tokenization issues. Was, was that at all useful, the live translation, or should I somehow wait? I don't know that we have a better option. I mean, it's not going to get to the yeah. end of the questions. And apologies for the noise here. My cats are fighting over... Uh... <laughs> My, my accent was that bad. It's uh, your cat. All right. So so I'll 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 continue. I'll con I'll try to do the live translation. I stopped because I thought it was too much noise. But <laughs> it, it's tricky because I can't really hear two things at once personally. But um, yeah. but we, have no, we have no shot if there's no translation. All I mean, right. Did, did you hear me you. trying to discuss it? That's yeah, good. I did. Okay. Um, uh, you can also use the chat if that would be better. Probably hard to do with. Can't um, type that fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Toss up you. <laughs> Let's let's see what happened. In einem Artikel in Dezember 1890 in der Review of Reviews argumentierte Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in an article in December 1989 in the Review of Reviews Sir Arthur Conan Doyle argumented that the here demonstrated was a awesome help with the diagnosis of tuberculosis, but no cure, uh, no cure. His, his clinic of Sauerbruch opened his clinic in 1929. Omnicellia was from the founder of his pathological institute, Rudolf Virchow, uh, given. I, I think it's Coke. Oh, it's not. Coke Co is mentioned in the question. Yeah. Oh, there he is. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. But the computer so thinks the computer thinks the same. If if they keep on thinking yep. this. <laughs> um, Christian Drosten, bekannt ist, ist ein Krankenhaus, dessen Name auf Französisch Barmherzigkeit bedeutet. Charité. That is correct. Uh, okay. So they want the place. I'm just going to lay off, I think. <laughs> um, Jordan, can you update the, the like, yes. buzzing is kind of weird. So I'm going to rely on the, on your, um, on your score. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Toss up uh, German number three. Ein jüdischer Charakter in Jewish character in this series. Uh, is being from the youngest son of Willy Brandt, Matthias Brandt, played. This character was killed by a maid under the influence of a uh, uh, help in the, in the stable. Uh, the nickname Fritz Hocker was the nickname. The murder of August Banda by Greta Overbeck uh, was by Oberst Wenst instigated. German show I can think of. Oh, Tom Twiker. What's it? Uh, in der Dreisiger. Babylon, Berlin. That is correct. Okay. Oh, okay. I haven't seen yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was pretty I sure it was in... one of my husband was watching to learn German. <laughs> I live in German culture. I knew none of these things. <laughs> oh, well. We are at 120 uh, computer, 165 human. And are we on toss up number 26, Jordan? I think we're at 160. I think I nagged on. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yes, thank I did. You. Okay. And we are on toss up 26, starting on 26. That is correct. And uh, the, the computer has no more wild cards at its disposal. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the correct okay. one to play. <laughs> okay. Toss up. A Thracian goddess. Of this activity was the dedicatee of a night festival involving torchlit horse races known as the Bindia. Along with skiing, a Norse god of this activity who lives in Yedalur is the subject of a ritual where oaths are sworn on his ring. A folkloric motif involving this activity typically involves figures like Gwyn Apnud or Odin leading a retinue of ghosts and spirits. 
Hiraeus fathered a hero associated with this activity after Zeus and Hermes urinated on a wineskin and told him to bury it. The constellation Scorpio was created after a scorpion stung and killed a hero of the I, I, uh, Hunting, I assume? Yes, that is correct. Thanks. Awesome. The refrain of a hymn titled for one of these places closes with the lines, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. In Song of Solomon, the speaker compares his spouse to a place of this type enclosed, from which, sorry, from whose name in Aviston, the word paradise is derived. In one of these places, by the brook Kidron, Simon Peter cuts off Malchus's- Okay, yeah. It's a, it's garden. a garden. Garden, garden, yeah. Uh, but the computer got there first. Yeah. Did they? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right, toss up. Oh, I need to clear, however. A tipsy character, after making a night of it, calls her father the Prince of Darkness for plying him with Spanish Burgundy. A character in this play tells a Euripides quoting man that there are two things necessary to salvation, money and gunpowder. In one scene from this play, um, Bill Walker causes Peter I, I buzzed. Shirley to burst. I, I buzzed. We, we buzzed, yeah. Is it, it's Major Barbara, right? That is correct. Yeah. yeah. Toss up 29. The arts company pinned in the margins created a series of live performances based on this poem titled Fair Field. In this poem, three wooden poles help protect the tree of charity from covetousness, the flesh, and the devil. Here's Plowman. That is correct. Hmm. Toss up. The energy relation with this quantity includes an additional additive squared term compared to the mass energy relation. In curved space time, the covariant divergence of the stress energy tensor T equals zero, uh, corresponding to the local conservation of energy and this quantity, which two quantities like space and time form a famous four vector. By Noether's theorem, space translation symmetry corresponds with the conservation law for this quantity. Uh, which was originally defined by Newton's third law of motion. Newton's second law can be defined using the time derivative of this quantity. The change in this quantity over time is called impulse. For yeah. Points, what quantity defined as um, momentum? Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Toss up. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, we wouldn't, uh, if the uh, humans were trailing, they would have an opportunity to use a wild card, but computers are trailing, so no wild card opportunity. Awesome. This essay, whose later editions included large editions and an epistle to the Quakers, prompted a response by Reverend Charles Inglis. Emerson. Um... Uh, the essay opens by criticizing the confounding of the concepts of society and government and later cites 1 Samuel 8. It might be civil disobedience. Civil be okay, you want to go? Uh, yeah, C civil disobedience. Uh, minus five. Mm. Sorry. Sorry. And uh, for 10 points, name the 1776 essay uh, promoting the American Revolution, a pamphlet by Thomas Paine. Oh, wow, okay. Hmm. Common sense. And that is correct. All right. Does that not update on the computer here, Jordan, when it gets mm -hmm. it right? It didn't, uh, it didn't update the score, did it, on the computer when it gets it right? I, I think it. I think it did. Did it? Well, okay, there's, a it diff different, there's different scores at the top and bottom of the screen. Right, which is why oh. I, I didn't see it update from 140, but the right, but the it should be awarded 10 points, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. uh, we'll trust the score on the <laughs> on the on the screen, or I can restart it if we want to display the correct score. Uh, yeah. Let's let's go ahead and restart it just because I think it'll be confusing otherwise, and, and it yeah. should be relatively quick. How many how many total questions are there, by the way? Uh, 40. So uh, we're uh, we're okay. near the end. Okay. Sorry, I should have said that uh, earlier. Uh, we are near the end. And so the question is, can the computer catch up enough to get another wild card? Or sorry, uh, yeah, for 
the humans to exercise. We can be generous and give the computer another wild card. I would rather not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that idea. Let's do German again. I do. I do. Not, I literally do nothing. So I, yeah, I rely on you. Let's do German. That just overwhelmed the human team. <laughs> Uh, toss up 32. Uh, clear clear the buzzer, please. Oh, thank you. Okay, toss up. The malfunction of this pathway can lead to hepatic encephalopathy, which can be treated with Lola because it increases the level of this pathway's end product in the body. Uh, transamination of acetate by uh, peridoxamine is the reason for the net gain of NA. DH in this pathway. Citric acid cycle. Uh, that is incorrect. All right. Okay. So we can hold off. Well, yeah, pyruvate yeah. or lactic acid or, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, options. To form argin uh, The first metabolic cycle to be discovered, this pathway's final reaction produces ornithine and the namesake product. For 10 points, name this pathway occurring primarily in the liver that produces a namesake nitrogenous compound present in urine. So what, urea or? It might be the uric uric acid. Uh, yeah, or, or urea, right? That's the same but thing. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Uh, urea cycle? Yeah, urea cycle. That's what we Good. were looking for. Okay. I'm 95 to 145. Oh. No, wrong way. All right. Uh, toss of 33. This artist depicted a woman with a child being embraced by a formerly imprisoned soldier in the order of release. Another child looks up at the title um, object. That buzz. It's uh, Malay. That is correct. Hmm. Yeah. I wasn't toss sure if you meant the English Malay or the French Malay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, though. Yes. <laughs> toss of 34. <laughs> An important dimensionless biophysical variable. Oh, it, wait, wait, wait yeah. we're not. Why? Okay, yeah. 2.05. Thank you. All right, toss up 34. An important dimensionless biophysical variable is the one-sided area of these structures per unit ground area known as their area index. Identifying the source species of these structures relies on determining components such as venation, usually palmate or pH. That is correct. Interesting. Okay, toss up 35. A character in this work wants a hairbrush with stiff bristles, not for brushing, but for spanking. That character in this work has a skull inscribed with the motto Et in Arcadio Ego and has a sister named Julia. Um, oh, wait, which one? Oh, no, it's, it's the, uh, uh, it's not Blood Meridian. That's a rifle it has, it has it on Blood Meridian, but I don't think better. Okay, minus five. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, Sebastian Flight and Charles Wright. Ah, I oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. No worries. That's what the first volume of it is called. Right. It is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Toss up 36. In a poem from this collection, the speaker resolves in his 41st year to tell the secret of my nights and days while wandering in paths untrodden. A poem in this collection describes a tree with joyous leaves whose look rude, unbending, lusty makes the speaker think of himself. The speaker of a poem in this collection claims that the body contains the start of the of grass. That is correct. Oh, okay. All right, the computer's mounting a comeback. Yeah. Just thinking truck for lead. It's still possible to win. Okay. Awesome. A red-shirted man climbs over a wall to meet a woman under a statue of Venus and Cupid in one painting by this artist. A man stabs himself while partially, while a partially nude woman faints next to him in this artist. Uh, Curry. Jean Honoré Fragonard. And that is correct. Nice. Hmm. All right, still possible to win. Let's see if the computer can pull it off. An impenetrable concrete as soil layer formed by the deposition and dissolution of this element's cation is called caliche. Anorthite is the end member of the solid solution series characterized by an increasing percentage of this element. 
massive structures composed of a hydrous form of this element sulfate were discovered in the cave of the crystals in the Nika mine. This element is the one replaced by dolomitization and is a component of gypsum. It is surrounded by a sodic rim. Um, I buzzed. Gypsum. Yeah. I buzzed. Mag magnesium? Uh, minus five. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Mm. Uh, oh, and this is a difficult one. I mean, dolomite is a magnesium element, and I figured yeah. with it being calcium, it was going to be um, likely in that series if that was what the computer was on. Right. Yeah, but gypsum, I didn't think it was in gypsum. Um, for 10 points, what element commonly substitutes with magnesium and is found in limestone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually calcium. Uh, oh, I ruled it out because it was showing as... Um, yeah, uh, calcium. yeah. I, I actually ruled it out for that reason. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I think, so what sometimes happens with GPT-3 is that it has some invisible characters. Uh, mm -hmm. And it had, it, that must have, maybe it had like an emoji or something there or, and it doesn't get printed here, but uh, the program didn't match it to calcium as a result. Okay. And uh, so, but then it changed its mind at, at the end and got it right. So uh, the computer was playing tricks on you. I feel very saucy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're at, or we're at even, 195 even. That's right. You wanna update the score on the screen, Jordan? Oh, oh, yes. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, clear, 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 please. Yes, thank you. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Penultimate toss up, 39. A comedic sequel to this film starred George Siegel and saw Lee Patrick reprise her role as the secretary, Effie. Yeah, it's the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> All right. And with that, uh, the humans have secured. Oh, God, no. Wrong side. It's confusing when you have the same score. All right. And with <laughs> that, 100, 100 points for that? <laughs> <laughs> it was so impressive. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I suppose the computer could till, still technically win if the humans. If the humans neg. Oh. Yeah, you could nag and the computer could win, or the computer could tie it up and we would go into a wild card uh, that uh, I get to choose. Okay. Can you include the buzzer, Okay, toss up 40. Can you include In the, the novel, the uh, player, please. Oh, it's clear. It's not, yeah, I can't buzz. Like, oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, yeah, thank you, toss up. In the novel, the little, sorry. In the novel, the literary conference, Cesar Ara, uses a wasp to acquire this author's cells and clones him in an attempt to take over the world. A character created by this author frequently it's shares a candelabra around her old and darkened mansion located at Don Cleese 815. The protagonist of a novel by this author travels with a black Gladstone suitcase containing ham sandwiches, a razor, and a copy of Don Quixote. A character hired to write yes. the memoirs um, of General Laurent falls in love with the title needs um, of Duelo before turning into it's the It's Yosa, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So, Niha, <laughs> I, I, I will leave the choice of the final wild card to you. We oh, have no. a scramble, old, German, and, oh, sorry, no, not German anymore, and boring. <laughs> Um, I haven't actually looked at which system does better for which, so this is truly a... a right, and, and so that's why I wanted you to do that, because yeah. I have some sense. Okay, um, so we have Scramble left. Um, yeah, Scramble, old, and boring. And boring, okay. Hmm. Depends on what my ulterior motive is. <laughs> um... Let's try scramble. Okay. Um, oh, okay. This will be fun to read. Okay, uh, so as Mia is pulling this up, uh, uh, what happened here is that, oh, oh uh, I have shuffled the order of words here. Uh, and so the questions, oh, actually, no, scramble is out. 
No, because we've used all the normal questions. Uh, so we can't do that, but that would have okay. been fun. So that we was. just have old and boring. Okay. <laughs> um, let's do... Well, so let me describe both and... and yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so old questions are questions from uh, that are on the internet somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and so these, these have been reused. <laughs> Uh, and so we'll, we'll see. Uh, so the humans or the computer could just as easily have read them. So who knows? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then we have boring questions. I randomly, I clicked the random page on Wikipedia and wrote a oh, question God. about random Wikipedia pages. Oh my Lord. These are both oh. terrible. Have you guys yeah. read all of Wikipedia? <laughs> 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 um, I feel like it's it's more likely the computer has both read o- lots of questions and read all of Wikipedia. <laughs> um, well, then let's do let's do old because there's maybe a chance that y'all have encountered these questions. Okay, my ulterior motive is for y'all to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's very kind. <laughs> so I'd like your students to succeed. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's do, and then between Quizbert and GPT-3, um, I don't think Quizbert would be well suited for questions it hasn't really seen, so. Okay. Well, no, I, but I, uh, so, uh, th- these are old Quizbolt questions. I, that's all I will say. Oh, okay. Then should we try, should we try that? Should we try Quizbert? Because presumably yeah. y'all have trained on a, a large body of, uh, of qu- quanta questions or quizable questions. Yeah, we can, we can yeah? do that. All right, ah. so we're going with Quizbert, old, um, all right, 205 to 205. I so, hope so you regularized a <laughs> hell lot. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. So, so what's the format like of this tiebreaker? Really uh, yeah, of so three questions. Day. And at, at the end of those three questions, uh, if the score is still tied at the end of those three questions, we still have the boring questions. <laughs> All right. OK. <clears throat> so toss up one. At the end of this war, thousands of prisoners were killed by being thrown into sinkholes known as Foibe. During this war, a guerrilla force was targeted by the unsuccessful Operation Night's Move, which paradropped thousands of troops in the raid on Drivar. At the end of this war, Draja Mahalovic was executed for leading a group of war- royalist guerrilla fighters known as the Chetniks. During this war, oh, the kidnapping of uh, yeah, Mikhail Sporthy's son. Okay. Uh, 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 World War II. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was Skorzeny who kidnapped uh, Mikhail Shorty Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Toss up number Clear, two. Please. Clear, please. Thank you. Okay. Owing in part to his failed experiment of mixing tempera and oil paints, this artist never completed a painting in the Hall of the 500. One of his sketches featured a single dragon among an array of cats and horses in various poses. Paolo Veronese. That is incorrect. Okay. All right. Let's get to the end here. We could just like answer incorrectly just to make it interesting. <laughs> I would <mean, it's> not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a non quizzer speaking. Because... Yeah, <laughs> for 10 points, name this artist of the Vitruvian Man and the Last Supper. It's Leonardo. Right? Leonardo. Okay. Yep. Leonardo All da Vinci. Right. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Wait, can we can we switch the models midway through? <laughs> <laughs> I think my model has seen these. Right. Of the last. The protagonist of this novel is the title subject of a 2013 counter investigation by Kem- Kamel Daoud. Near oh, the end um, of this novel, it's the it's the, stra- the stranger. Nice. And that is correct. So, uh, to the folks in the class, this these are these were questions in the in the development set. So if you retrained your system after tuning uh, on all of the questions in the development set, you would have seen them. But if you just used the development set for hyperparameter tuning, then you would not have seen them. So <laughs> it, it is it is interesting though that I, you know, that 
Can you read one of the boring questions? Because sure, I, th- sure, you know, yeah, I thought I thought you kind of knew you, you people know like everything, but there, so there oh. is like there is like a specific. Oh, we said everything from like you know supporting characters in you know K dramas that okay. that you know I mean Wikipedia is enormous. Okay. Okay. Um, okay yeah. Let, let's 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 do that and let's let's try the GPT uh, retrieval system okay. and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll do the boring questions. Okay. All right. Claire, well, I, I guess I should really say random. Uh, maybe that would have been a better. Uh, but yeah, they, they, these things do not have the notability in Western culture that um, the other things that we asked about do. Okay. Give me one second to get this set up. We're using GPT three. Uh, Claire, please. Oh, yes. All right. I'm ready to go. All right, Tasa. Shortly after he appointed Osai Gabovo Ehoya as his chief of staff, rumors swirled that he would leave the PDP in collaboration with Omo in Oba in Edoko Uko Akapokolo and Oba Aware the second. He declared that Benin City would in host Nigeria. museum. Oba Aware too. Uh, ah, that is incorrect. Um, uh, would host a museum for looted artifacts. He resigned uh, from Afrin's, uh, sorry, Afrin Vest to run for his current position and formerly was the founding secretary of the Africa Chamber of Commerce. For 10 points, named as People's Democratic Governor of Edo Province. Edo Province. Uh, I do not oh. know the provincial governor of Nigeria. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, no. No idea. Okay, uh, this is Godwin Obaseki. Of course. Sure. <laughs> it might have fit into the other Edo. <laughs> yeah. Toss up. This train station saw severe overcrowding on 12th of October 1974 during the Children's Day festivities in the Quinta de Boa Vista, causing deaths and hundreds of injuries. Mario Baselli and Jose Paulo de Bim Sao uh, Brazil, were obviously, we don't know any train station <laughs> in 2000. Hmm. Sao Cristóvão Station. That is correct. Okay. Uh, Tata, this technique was first conducted on November 3rd, 1919 with the support of Hiron N. Weinberg at Mount Sinai in New York. Both its namesake and William Carey initially proposed using uh, color grohl, but instead used oxygen, where manometer readings less than 100 suggest no obstruction. Later improvements uh, switched carbon dioxide for oxygen and a chymograph for the pressure readings. For 10 points, name this uh, tubal uh, insufflation test for checking tubal patency and infertility. Saline infusion test. Uh, that is incorrect. Hmm. I don't know this. Yeah, don't know. Uh, like- yes, uh, this is the Rubin test. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> Even though I was born born at Mount Sinai in New York. But- <laughs> Okay, and that is the game. Uh, so thank you uh, so much to uh, both the students who put in a huge amount of effort this semester uh, uh, to, to put all of this together. Uh, and uh, thank you so much to the human uh, victors uh, today. So <laughs> congrats. Uh, and, and thank you so much to uh, uh, my teaching assistant, Niha, who, who did so much over the semester just to make sure that everything was put together. Um, yeah, and so I, uh, I wanted to end with a little bit of a discussion about what was going on. And so um, for the, the students who had the system uh, and also anyone from the class uh, uh, who, who wants to ask a question, uh, like, was there anything surprising? Uh, were there things that um, you thought that the system should have gotten, but it didn't uh, or vice versa? Um, for me, I think uh, the, the machine learning, uh, that wildcard was a game changer. <laughs> but then we had the German wildcard, which, you know, kind of shifted the balance. Um, that, that was definitely tough, like without like a natural German speaker, even the human team, even though they have, you know, even though they have uh, Yannick trying to translate real time, it's just too much, too much information over, uh, overload. Yeah, I would agree. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised on, on how well GPT-3 did on the German questions. I thought that would be a complete gimme for the, the humans. Um, and so like even, uh, yeah, and, and so uh, I thought that the, the systems would look a lot like uh, what they looked like in the past. And so they, they would be completely flummoxed by German, but uh, GPT-3 did uh, relatively well. It didn't didn't it hold like the the zero shot state of the art in in several translation domains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think especially yeah. I think English and German. That's like yeah. their forte. It's crazy. Yeah. So so most of the time, uh, the systems in this class uh, uh, just use the tr the data that I provide. Maybe they throw in English Wikipedia, and so like normally German would be completely impossible for these systems, and so I, I was pleasantly surprised. Did anyone try to like uh, do anything like a retrieval? Oh no, you all did retrieval, but just from the data sets, right? Did anyone try to use like Google as a retrieval step or maybe just like index Wikipedia or something like this? So there were a number of teams that wanted to do that, but like we had a fixed deadline and uh, some yeah. teams didn't get their <laughs> systems uh, working in time and uh, to, to be submitted. And so, yes, People wanted to do that, but uh, not everybody was able to get their systems uh, finished in time. And so you, so you know how it goes at the end of the semester. One of the systems that we were developing uh, downloaded Wikipedia articles on the fly to read, but that was just too slow. It would take like minutes to answer a question. So we just scrapped mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, that was also the reason we, we focused on the closed book question answering aspect of it. Um, Trying to answer something without the full, uh, without the full knowledge. So like in the, all, in the beginning of these questions and this like, there is a lot of contextual knowledge for the answer, but it's not contained there. So like our strategy for, for at least for GPT-3 was uh, we provide that knowledge and then we had our data sets where we say uh, question at the beginning, then we, at the very end, we are like the answer is whatever the answer is associated with the question. And that, helps it like kind of autofill the, uh, the answer part uh, during the, the training and the, um, the evaluations uh, process. But for, for our project, yeah, we just focused on some of the popular data sets out there, like Trivia QA, Kanta, and, and we kind of evaluated GPT-3 on that, see how it performs. So you were right, if, you, I, if I remember correctly, um, at your your end of question accuracy was in the, the high seventies, low eighties before you added in the retrieval component, and then you got into the nineties. And so then it's just a question of can you get it faster than Yogesh and Victoria? So you were trying to get to provide the knowledge to GPT three and essentially just use GPT three to do the the closed closed domain question answering. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I see. Yeah, it would be interesting also the other way around, like to use GPT-3 as a retrieval mechanism because it knows so much, right? It like Because mm. if you try to provide the knowledge, you really rely on this knowledge being in your data set somewhere. But given that GPT-3, it's just it, it just knows like all of the internet, essentially. Uh, you, you, could, you could sort of try to query it for relevant information. Um, and then, though, I don't know if that would be fast enough because you'd have to do it like repeatedly and it takes, I don't know, it takes like one or two seconds per inference, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had a team in the chat that says that their team used the Wikipedia knowledge graph to find Wikipedia articles that were linked to named entities um, in the question. Isn't that sort of what Watson did? I have no clue what Watson did. Hey, well, yeah, so, so Watson did a bunch of stuff and then fed it into a logistic regression system. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, to, to re-rank the answers. And so, yes, that was part of it. And they also did a lot of syntactic parsing and, and stuff like that. Well, I enjoyed the, the wild cards a lot. <laughs> I, I think that like the team behind should always get the wild cards and not, not just twice. Well, I, I, yeah, if, if I had more time and more creativity and could have come up with more wild cards... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, maybe we would have. Done that. Knew, next, next time, you should have them do the question, do do a, a set of questions in Pig Latin. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, so that's a good suggestion. Uh, what are other wild cards that we should have done? Or just scramble the order of letters within the word. 
like oh, keep yeah. the first, oh, and, okay. first and last letter are the same. Yeah. Oh. I, it would be, be a lot of green to read, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I, 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 they would take yeah. a lot of practice. Leave away white space. Just. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was looking forward to the scramble. And so, uh, and are as cutty doc dry gypsy in four kept moth museum sark ships the, this town. <laughs> but have you, have you tested this at all? This wild card with the system? Oh yeah, so, so uh, it actually does okay. Mm. Uh, both systems, uh, like, uh, they take longer to answer, but they still get to the answer. And I think that probably also would have been true of the humans. And have the students been, because sometimes I see like it, the system was like GPT-3 mask. This, so the students knew the wild cards and were able to prepare. No, for no, them? they submitted their systems and then okay. we ran it on these data. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, the, 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 the students uh, hated me because we had them create dockers and uh, things like that. And so that, that was not so fun. Uh, That's okay. Prepares them for the real world. <laughs> yeah. So what other wild cards <laughs> should we have? You know, computer team, like, is there a wild card that you wish we had done that we didn't do? We already have foreign language. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm I mean, not sure. The, the old questions were, were pretty good. I mean, if they were from the training set, it would probably be a killer. Exactly. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted to be a little bit tricky. Uh, mm. Maybe a wild card where the, only the computer knows the answer, like 100%. <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Yeah, I can't maybe really... uh, like common sense questions. Like sometimes um, there, there's like questions that you can ask that, that grammatically, uh, it, it's challenging for uh, a model to predict the answer because the, the grammar yeah, is just common so sense would be good. Yeah, yeah, so like questions where the answer is a glass of water or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess math reasoning would be another one. Uh, word, word play type questions. Yeah. You know, take take the you know second letter of this and then switch it with you know the second letter of this other thing and and then you get this Ooh. other you know. Metaphors. Where where all proper nouns are replaced by synonyms. Or oh. all, titles, yeah. all titles, yeah. In the chat, we have uh, a wild card where everything is negated. <laughs> oh, yeah, some models really struggle with that. Well, that's what we notice in our research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th there was a team who, who focused on crossword style clues and uh, had... Uh, yeah, with a, it would have been nice to, to somehow get them uh, into the mix here. And the, the letter information would, would uh, be consistent with that. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, it, it, from the uh, other folks in the class, uh, do you have any questions or comments uh, that you want to share uh, in our last minutes? This was fun. I liked it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I hope that it was. And uh, we're, we're, we're uh, uh, slowly getting better. And uh, I, I think one thing that I want to do next year is, or next time we do this, is to make the submission system a little cleaner. Uh, uh, so that, and to give people more consistent feedback. I think um, people only got feedback at the end of the semester. And so they couldn't do as much hill climbing um as I, I think would have been optimal um but still uh, uh this is the best performance uh that is this, this is the first time that uh, at the end of regulation questions the computer 
um, was not behind. Uh, and so even though the tiebreaker didn't break for the class, this is still the best that it has ever done. A very exciting drama. Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm interested <laughs> in how the two computer models performed against each other. Uh, yeah, so the um, uh, GPT-3 uh, retrieval did a little bit better. And I, um, uh, I, I think it, it was just a little bit more flexible. Um, uh, so that, and, and so you probably saw uh, two thirds of the questions were GPT-3 and about a third were Quizbert. And so that was, that reflected kind of the rough uh, relative strength of those two systems. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, so uh, without any, uh, seeing anything else, uh, thank you so much for everyone who joined. I will be posting a cleaned up version of this uh, thanks to the people who watched it live and apologies for the YouTube uh, sound issues. Uh, I'll post a, a higher quality version uh, uh, in a little bit, probably next week. Um, thank you so much uh, to our human team. Again, we really appreciate it, uh, both uh, for your knowledge of trivia and also the commentary. I, I think this was really valuable and uh, I like the dynamic of uh, folks talking to each other and using their disparate skills uh, to lead your team to victory. Uh, so uh, congratulations again, and thank you so much for your time um, I'll be following up uh, uh, to send you a, a little gift as a token of our appreciation. We wanted to do this uh, in person, uh, but uh, hopefully we can do something like that in the future. But in the meantime, uh, we'll, we'll uh, be on the lookout for uh, a little gift of our appreciation. Uh, thank you to Niha for doing a lot of uh, the technical work behind the scenes and for uh, pressing the space bar as I read every <laughs> word to feed it into the computer. And so I know that's very annoying. Uh, but uh, uh, everything worked great. Thank you so much uh, for all of your help this semester. And, and most of all, thank you to all the students in CMSC 470. Uh, uh, this has not been a normal semester, but uh, y'all did a great job and have learned a lot. And you came this close uh, to building systems <laughs> that uh, could beat some of the smartest people in the world. So congratulations. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much and uh, happy holidays and uh, hopefully next time in person. Sounds great. Thank you, Jordan. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, stream ended, ending Zoom. All right.